This question gives us three problems to solve using the work energy theorem. I'll start by writing down the basic relations. The work done on an object by a constant force F is the force dotted into the displacement, which can be expressed this way, where theta is the angle between the force vector and the displacement vector. The work energy theorem tells us that the work done by all forces on an object equals the change in its kinetic energy, where K equals half M V squared. In part A, we have a box sliding at 5 meters per second when it encounters a rough surface with some coefficient of kinetic friction, and we're asked to find how far the box slides before stopping. We can write down the work energy theorem, and then realize that friction is the only force doing work on the box as it slides, so that work will equal the change in the kinetic energy. I'll label this point on the left the initial point and the final point where the box stops moving. The final kinetic energy then is zero, and to help us evaluate the work done by friction, I'll draw the box here, moving this way in the direction of the displacement vector with the force of friction opposite that opposing the motion. This means that the work done by friction will be the magnitude of the kinetic friction force times the magnitude of the displacement before stopping times cosine of the angle between those two. That's cosine of 180 degrees, which is negative 1. And that will equal minus half m v squared. The kinetic friction force on the box is mu times the normal force, which in this case equals mg. So we can substitute that. Cancel the masses and solve for the distance that the box slides before stopping. When we substitute the values and calculate, we find the box goes 5.80 meters before coming to a rest. In part B, we're asked to find the box speed after it slides half of that distance, 2.90 meters, across the rough surface. We'll do this using the work energy theorem where the work done by all forces on the box again equals the work done by kinetic friction. In this case, we'll write the work done by kinetic friction as minus mu k mg times the distance d that it slides, similar to the expression above, and that equals the change in kinetic energy, half m v f squared minus half m times the initial speed squared. We can cancel the m's, multiply by 2, and solve for the final speed. That gives us this expression. Which we can evaluate to find the box is moving 3.53 meters per second after it has slid halfway to its stopping point. In part C, the box is moving at 12 meters per second when it encounters a frictionless incline We're asked to find how high vertically the box rises. I'll call that distance h. The box's displacement as it rises is delta x along the x-axis and h along the y-axis. So the work done by gravity as the box moves up the incline is the force of gravity dotted into that displacement, which is minus mg y-hat dotted into delta x x-hat plus h y hat, which gives us minus mg h as the work done by gravity as the box moves up the ramp. From the work energy theorem, we can substitute the work done by gravity, that's the only force doing work on the box as it slides, zero out the final kinetic energy where the box comes to a rest, cancel the masses, and solve for the height h to which the box rises before it stops. That gives us this expression, which we can evaluate to find the box rises 7.35 meters above the horizontal surface before it stops moving.